The Daily Ramble podcast. Hello, Hammers fans. David Moyes here, and you're watching Claret and Booze. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Good morning, you lovely people. It's Nick from Claret and Booze. Welcome to the show. This is my Daily Ramble. I hope you're all well. As always, before we get started, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Not far off 11K now. And drop a like on the video. Would be very much appreciated. Uh, right. Okay, we all know the news <laughs> that broke yesterday. Um, I don't know what people were, were expecting from a uh, reaction from me. Obviously, Gary came on yesterday and did a video, so um, I was always planning on coming on this morning and having my say. Um, but I never reacted badly to it. I didn't react badly to it at all. In fact, it was probably probably my, uh, my favourite press conference of the year so far. It really was, because um, it's just definitive proof that... Um, it's all been rubbish. It's all been nonsense. It's David Moyes trying to save face. I've got some other information to share with you as well um, on this because it's caused quite the stir within the club. So, look, as we know, if you if you stretch back to the last time we won a game, December the 28th, which was away against Arsenal, David Moyes came out and said, um, pounced on that opportunity, which we said because we, we, we said we know he's been kicking and screaming about getting a new contract. Um... And he pounced on the opportunity of a, of a good start results-wise to a Premier League season by putting pressure, public pressure on the ball to give him a contract. He said that we will be sitting down in January and we will be discussing a, a new contract. You know, I want to stay. Then after the Bournemouth game, obviously we had a bit of a bad run, which has just got which has just got even worse. Uh, he came out and said, yeah, 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 yeah. He was asked again about the contract. Yeah, yeah, we're still doing it. Um, yeah, we're quite advanced. Pro- probably a, another couple of weeks. So he's obviously, there's there's talks going on behind the scenes. You know, David Moyes still pressuring because like I said, the prime time for David Moyes to get a contract, if not after the, the, the cup win in Prague, would have been after the best start to a Premier League season in, in, our, in our history, you know, which he kept on harping on about. So... Um, that was that was the right time, and he came out and went, yeah, yeah, another couple of weeks. Anyway, he's been asked again, except he wasn't asked this time because this was the um, uh, this was all orchestrated, not by the club, by David Moyes. Um, the guy that asked him the questions in that West Ham press conference, you know, the guy with the mic, basically, um, they they know he's pre prepared as to what is going to be asked. You know, he's got his his answers all already queued up, so he would have discussed with that guy what the questions were going to be. And he would have got his answers ready before that happened. Um, so, yes, he was asked about his contracts and he came out and said, look, the contract's on the table. It's all done. It's all agreed. But I've decided, you know, I've decided that um, I'm going to wait until the end of the season and then I'm going to and then I'm going to make my mind up. You know, I've decided, you know, <laughs> this is all about David Moyes trying to retain uh, retain face. He's going to feel very stupid at this point because he's come out and said several times that the contract's done. You've had his brother shooting his mouth off in um, uh, director's boxes saying it's a done deal, it's a done deal. It's not a done deal. It never has been a done deal. Uh, never has been. There isn't a contract on the table. There isn't. Verbally, have they been discussing things? Is it is it far along the line, lines in that sense? Yeah, yeah. I suppose there is, there is a, a deal in principle. You know, would you work for this, Dave? Would you work for that, Dave? Um, there's probably been discussions around a new format of deal as well, because as we've said, with Tim Steiton coming in, there would be changes in the way that deal was structured. There would have been responsibilities removed from David Moyes and handed to Tim Steiton. The structure would change. Um, But also there would be a a financial change. There there would be KPIs, targets that he's got to meet. But there is nothing. What I do know is that there there is no contract on the table. That is is purely David Moyes that that has come out and said that, which is basically a blatant lie, all right? And that's corroborated by the fact that the club are not backing this up. They're not backing it up at all. They're not coming out in defence of David Moyes. In fact, you can expect counter stories coming out very soon. I've spoken to, um, very, very briefly, spoken to the obvious people who have got connections with the board, and they're not happy. They're not happy. Uh, I've, I've had a call with somebody else as well who have, who's gone one step further to say that they are incandescent with rage. Incandescent with rage. Moyes has gone rogue. He's gone rogue. Because what he's done is, Moyes has very cleverly shifted the crosshair from his head onto David Sullivan and Karen Brady's head. Because he didn't mention anyone else. He didn't mention Start and he didn't mention Kratinsky or Kadinsky. Um, he didn't mention any of them. He, he kind of, um, he just, just solely, Karen Brady, who doesn't own the club, you know, she's 
David Sullivan's secretary and um and, and David Sullivan. So um uh yeah, so it's very, very interesting what's gonna happen next because Again, he's very adamant, I'm going to see my contract out. That's going to happen. It's not in his hands. It's not in your hands, Dave. The only way that happens is if you pull out some um, some results in the next two or three games and then you won't get sacked. You might get a chance to see your contract out and you can leave on what would be probably best for everyone concerned in terms of the club. Not us. We want him out. But for David Sullivan, because of the media and everything else, it would probably make more sense and be better for David Sullivan if he could run his contract down and leave by mutual consent. That would that would be better for everyone. But it's not going to be allowed to go that far if he keeps on losing. It's as simple as that. You know, we know the next the next three games now are uh, there's a European game in there now, aren't there? With Freiburg, it's a boring draw, isn't it? Uh, and that is Everton. Uh, it's Brentford, Everton, and then Freiburg on the seventh of March. That's the home leg, and then we uh, we we play Burnley. So whether or not they give him the European leg as well, I don't know. I'm not too sure. That's a way. That's a way against Freiburg as well. I don't know, but I can't see us beating Brentford. I can't. Um, and Everton. That's that's another one, isn't it? You know, they're they're a team that are pretty similar to the way that David Moyes likes to play. They're a boring, frustrating team can go either way. I think they're I think they're actually better at the boring shit than what we are this year. You know, they're they're conceding far less goals, but then again everyone's conceding far less goals than us. So it's going to be very interesting what happens. But if you look into this a little bit deeper, and let's just assume that this isn't bollocks, you know, and this was all above board, which again I'm going to say it isn't, but let's just say it was. This is how selfish and narcissistic this bloke is. Right? He has literally painted the picture that he is bigger than West Ham that he can sit there and wait until the end of a season before West Ham can do any preparation, before Tim Starter can go out and queue any players up, before we can do anything. That's all got to wait until the great David Moyes makes his mind up. Is that right? Of course it isn't. So even if it was true, it would be unacceptable. Tim Starter's got to go out there looking for players, looking for targets that suit a manager, that suit a certain style. Um... You can't do that until June, really. That's not going to happen. You know what if David Moyes decides to magically say, "Oh, I don't want to. I don't want my contract anymore." They've then got to go out and try and find other managers as well. We know that there's going to be other clubs looking for managers. So this whole narrative that's being painted it, again, I've said it so many times. This isn't David Moyes talking to the West Ham fans. He doesn't talk to the West Ham fans. He doesn't give a shit about the West Ham fans. He's talking to the media. He's trying to perpetuate this vision of David Moyes, the Messiah, in the mainstream media to, to build his profile. He believes his own hype. David Moyes truly believes that he is better than West Ham. That was David Moyes throwing West Ham, including his bosses, under the bus for his own self-interests. He was twerking. Yeah, David Moyes was twerking. Imagine that. He's saying... Come and get me. Come and get me, big boys. Klopp's. What about you, Liverpool? I've managed Man United, you know. I've managed Man United. Klopp's retiring. Why don't you come and give me a go? It was a come and get me play. No one's going to come and get you, Dave. They're not. They're not. Even those idiots on TalkSport. And this is where you know it's banter now. It's banter. We're, we're a banter club. David Moyes and David Sullivan have turned us into banter FC. That's what they've done. You know, I'm I'm going to tune out of, of TalkSport now. I'm not going to consume any more of it and get wound up. There was another piece with um, with Bent and Foster, and they were talking about the same narrative, you know. West Ham fans, what do you want? You know, be careful what you wish for. You know, he's won you a cup, he's done this and he's done that. And then they went on to say, well, let's just say that um, David Moyes doesn't decide himself to renew his contract. Where do you reckon he'll go? And they started saying, well, um, what about Newcastle? And, um, you know, because Eddie Howe's probably not going to be there. Newcastle? They was like, no, 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 not Newcastle. Those fans won't want to watch that. Those were, That was literally the wording. Those fans won't want to watch that style. Okay, well, talking about Newcastle then, do you, can you see Thomas Frank going to um, Newcastle? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thomas Frank, he'd be good. Um, so that frees up the Brentford job. Well, what about um, what about Brentford? Do you reckon he could go in there? Or oh, I don't know. I don't know whether his style would suit. You know, Brentford like to play football the right way. And then they went one step further. And they went, well, maybe a newly promoted club. A newly promoted club. And they went, what, Ipswich? And Ben went, no, no, 
not not Ipswich. No, no, no. So they're basically saying they're taking the piss. They're ignoring the fact that we are the 14th richest club in the world. They hate to admit this. They hate to admit that we are not little old West Ham anymore. They don't want to admit that we have spent the eighth most money in David Moyes' tenure in the entire league, that we've got the seventh highest wage bill. But they talk about us like we are fucking mugs like Sheffield United. We should just make do when no one else would want him. Fucking work that out. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's crazy. The, the whole situation is crazy. Um, do I think he's going to last until the end of the season? No, I don't. I don't. And that's purely based on the fact I don't think he's going to get results. I don't think he's going to get the results that he would need to retain his job until the end of the season. I think he'll go. I think they'll get rid of him. They'll have to. Because at the end of the day, if you get to the stage where you've got nothing left to play for and the fans are erupting, he's gone. He's history. But he's adamant. David Moyes is adamant that he's going to he's going to see his contract out no matter what. The guy, his ego is out of control. Now, I've always thought the same about Sullivan, but he's met his match here. You know, I've almost got to give him some sort of level of credit for how rogue he's gone. It's a shame he don't show bollocks like that with his football style, isn't it? You know, we probably wouldn't mind him as much then because he literally has, he's, he's a selfish, self-indulgent twat. He's deluded. Like I said, he genuinely thinks he's better. He probably thinks he's in with a shout of getting a Liverpool job. He probably does. He probably does. Um, but no, like I say, there wasn't a bad reaction from me yesterday when I saw that. I, I literally... I'll rub my hands together. I thought that is brilliant. It's like a, it's like a delayed resignation. That's what it is. Um, it ain't going to happen. Uh, he's, he's also hedging his bets. There's that as well. Because what the club have done, what the club have done is the talks that they were having on contracts, which were preliminary talks, verbal talks, you know, there, there, there was never a contract that changed hands. Um, they've basically said to him now, no, Dave, fuck off. Stop asking for a new contract. We'll do it at the end of the season, mate. You need to get some, you need to get some results and then we'll talk. And what David Moyes has done is he's he's tried to steal back a little bit of control because he doesn't want to lose face in the media. That is all that's happened. It's all that's happened. Uh, in return, in, in terms of our bald, they're weak as piss. They're weak as piss. You know, it almost is starting to feel like now that this is proof, you know. Moyes is bullying he's bullying them. How is that going to make Stuyton feel? How was that story going to make Stuyton feel? Now, I'm assuming that it's been sorted. I'm assuming that, obviously, Stuyton would have gone straight to Sullivan and gone, what the fuck is this all about? And he'd have gone, no, 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 he's talking rubbish. There is no contract. There is no contract. So I'm assuming that's crisis over. But nonetheless, in the media, it would have caused so many problems behind closed doors. Why are they putting up with it? Why are they putting up with it? Honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. He's, he's won something stupid. His Premier League games in the last 80 games, he's won about 23. He's fucking shit. Winning ain't what he does. His COVID record playing behind closed doors was really good. It was about 45%. But ever since, everything outside of COVID is about as bad as Avram Grant. He's fucking rubbish. He's great at beating pool cleaners from Iron Appa. He is. With a half billion assembled squad. He's amazing at that. But competing in the Premier League, no, no, the guy's a fraud. He's a very limited manager. Not to not to be too nasty, the guy's just really limited. He's got one. He's got one plan. You know, his plan A is probably every other manager's plan. Fucking D and E because it's shit. <laughs> it's shit. We haven't got the personnel now. You know, he's burned the third consecutive transfer window. And I, again, I've got it on good authority. I don't like Sullivan at all. And I do blame him for not just going out there and getting players in January anyway, because overall, this is his club. It's his responsibility. So we can blame Moyes, but he can go out there and just, just say, no, Dave, we're getting players in. We need them. But David Moyes has killed the last three transfer windows. He gets players thrown at him. Dave, this one, this one, this one. No, no, don't want him. But Dave, we ain't got a left winger. I've got Zaha here for you. No, don't want him. You don't want Zaha? Fucking hell. The geezer can't even help himself. He's mad. And what I've said before about the Calvin Phillips deal, my words were that by them sanctioning that Calvin Phillips deal, that was them giving him the rope to hang himself. They were not happy. I know for a fact, Stuyton and Sullivan were not happy with the Phillips signing. They weren't. They fought it right until the end. They kept on coming to him with different players, different types of players. He said, no, I want this player. And basically with what the deal was costing us, it is a, it's not, it's an open threat. It's an open threat. He has to succeed. 
He has to succeed. He's not going to succeed. He's failed. I mean, he's going to have to do some amazing things for a CDM in the last few games to undo the fucking damage that's been done in the first few, you know? Cost us two goals and got sent off. It's, it's been a catastrophe. So, again, that's another example of David Moyes not really listening to the people that run the club. He does his own He does his own thing. I know he speaks really well and really highly and really respectful in public of, of Sullivan and Brady, but I'm telling you, that geezer is a fucking narcissist. I don't think they can manage him. They can't manage him, which is why I find it absolutely bizarre that Sullivan is locked in this state of paralysis and fear that we can't do any better than David Moyes. Go and get your head tested, Sullivan. He's one of the worst. He, I'm going to say it now. He's the most undesirable manager in this Premier League. I don't think there is a single manager, a single club, that would want to swap their current manager for David Moyes. I don't think there is. I don't. Even even Burnley with company company I'd swap company with with um I, I would with the players that we've got I'd take company in a hundred percent all day long. He's doing the best with what he's got. He's got a philosophy. He hasn't quite got the personnel to deliver it. I just think there we've got we've got the worst. We've got one of the most expensive squads and we've got the worst manager in the Premier League. And he's a fucking nightmare. He's self indulgent. The fans hate him. He's toxic. There are no positives with this guy. He stifles youth talent. Where are the where are the tick boxes? When people come out, uh, uh, when I did that thing for Talksport, I was getting people on Twitter saying, "Debate this man, debate that man." A Moyes inner, if you like, from fucking some Twitter thing. You know, there's about twelve of them left. If you go on one of those Twitter spaces, that's that's, that's all that listens to them. Um, but that that that's, that that's that's what you're dealing with. Go and debate them. And I'm like, I tell you what, I tell you what. I think one of one of the one of the geezers' names was Claret Carpet. He said, I'll debate you. I said, I'll tell you what, go online, put your face on camera and give me an argument and tell me why David Moyes is the right man for West Ham's future. Set it out. Set it out, you know. Tell me why David Moyes is the best man for, for, for West Ham's future, you know, without referencing the cup win that master shit Premier League season and sixth and seventh place two fucking years ago. Because when you get appraised at work, you get appraised, you know, normally on your last year. But we'll, we'll be generous. We'll give David Moyes two years. Two years in the Premier League has been shocking, awful, as bad as any manager before him, and he spent ten times more. The geezer's fucking useless. We bail out of every domestic cup in, in embarrassing fashion. We're getting whipped, whooped on a, on, a, on a regular basis. We've just shipped our heaviest home defeat for 30-odd fucking years against Arsenal. I don't see I don't see what the positives are and he keeps on banging on about players missing. Players missing. One player. One player we've had missing. With Piquetta. You know, Caduce was at AFCON for like the fucking record quickest time. They got knocked out. He was back. You've been missing one player. Lucas Piquetta. It's not our fault that you've stripped away and you flushed out every piece of flair in that squad so that without... Lucas Piquetta there, we've got no creativity. We've got no one that can basically create stuff on their own. And if you haven't seen the video that I put out yesterday, which was a highlight reel created by someone else, a highlight reel of Lucas Piquetta from this season, the start of this season, everything that's good that's happened at West Ham has come from Lucas Piquetta, from his genius. That's it. Not from David Moyes' coaching, not from the way that we set up. Basically, if Luke, if, if David Moyes hasn't got the coattails of a top, top player to ride on, he had Declan Rice, then he, well, he had Lingard, Declan Rice, then he had Lucas Piquetta. If he can't basically fucking just bunny up onto their shoulders and have them carry him for a season, we can't do anything. If you look at Brighton and you look at Deserby, when they had all of those injuries, all uh, serious injuries, you look at the way that they was playing, their style of play never changed. They weren't as clinical because they had the likes of Matoma that was out and players like that. But they look the same. They carry on playing the same way because they're coached. They're coached. David Moyes doesn't coach anyone. He don't. The geezer's a fraud. <laughs> He's a fraud. He's rubbish. I can't wait until he goes. And you know what? People go on about, um, he's living in me head. You know, I'm obsessed with him. I've already said it. When David Moyes is gone from this club, which he's going to be, 85 days left. Worst way. 85 days. I'm counting the fucking days, Right? He will be no more than a fart in the wind. I will never think of him again. I, 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 honestly, I hate his style of football. I hate the fact he's here. That's what I hate. I hate the fact that 
You've got talk sport presenters saying that West Ham are not better than David Moyes. That really fucks me off. Almost as much as our own fans doing the same as him. They don't think that we can do better than David Moyes. It's your own choice, but Jesus Christ, you know, have some ambition in life. You know, have you ever changed a pair of pants? I, I, I don't get it. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But look, um, that's it from me, all right? It's going to be very interesting. We don't play until this weekend. We don't play until Monday, so I think everyone else does play. So the likelihood is if results go against us, we would need to win against Brentford to stand still. The gaps are getting bigger. You know, teams that we were five point six points ahead of uh, f a few weeks ago are now six, seven, eight points ahead of us. That's how the gap is going to start progressing. And we're going to start getting closer to 13th and 14th than we are to top six. Because results are starting to follow performances. It's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. The man's a fraud. West Ham needs to move on. Sullivan needs to grow a pair of bollocks. Anyway, speak to you all soon. Gavin, you hands.